Hey, what's up guys? First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you so much for crushing it on the channel. You guys are killing it. It's amazing. I didn't expect the channel to do this well with only having four videos up, but thanks to you guys it is. So I appreciate it. Keep it up and I'll keep posting videos. Anyways, we got a crazy video today. We're going to go to a poker game one, two, and we actually go on a bit of a heater. So if you guys want to see some big pots, stick around and let's get in those poker hands. Hey, what's up guys? Today we are going to be starting with a pot limit Omaha hand, all right? We start off with $5 on the button, look down and see King, Queen, 9, 6, double suited. So it's a pretty connected hand. We got two suit draws, Grant. It's not the nut draw, but kind of is what it is. It's Omaha. We're happy with it. We'll see what happens. Small blind, big blind call. The under the gun player decides to go all in for his remaining $15. Middle position raises up to 30. I give it a call, small blind folds, and the big blind decides to make the call as well. So we're going three ways to a flop here in the very first Omaha hand of the night. Oh, by the way guys, let me know if you like the way the vlog looks now. I did some changes, wanna kinda update a little bit, but let me know if you like this way or the other way more. Anyways, flop comes out, it's queen six three rainbow. So we flop top two pair, big blind checks in the middle position decides to lead out for $30. Now, once again, we have top two pair. We also have a ton of backdoor draws. We have backdoor spades, we have backdoor clubs. We even have backdoor straights if we're, you know, talking about all these backdoors. So I decided to raise it up to 90. We're really only afraid of pocket threes at this point. I guess pocket queens and pocket sixes are an option, but we kind of limit the amount of hands that they can have of those. Small blind gets out of the way, middle position tanks for a little bit, and then he decides, if I'm gonna call that, I'm just gonna put the rest of my chips in. So he ships his stack for 170 in. I snap call, I'm not going anywhere. I raised to 90, I'm never folding for 170. The dealer gets a pot right, and me and the gentleman are discussing how many times we wanna go. He says he only goes once which I played with this player before. I already knew that, but I wanted to give him an option anyway. So we are going one time. Hopefully we can hold because he does say we're ahead right now. The last card we wanted to see was the seven of spades on the turn, and that is exactly what came. But we are bailed out when the six of diamonds comes on the river, giving us a boat. Six is full. We announce our hand. He says we're good. We take down the first pot of the night, winning $450. Not a bad way to start. The next hand we look down at is Jack-10 Offsuit. There's a $5 button straddle. I immediately raise it up to $25. I like Jack-10. I think this is a little heavy for Jack-10 Offsuit, but it is what it is. Middle position and cutoff call, and we are going three ways to the flop. Which is really good when we flop top two pair on a nine Jack-10 with two club board. We lead out for 50, middle position, goes all in for $235. Which of course is the last thing we wanted to see. It sounds like this in poker where you're just banging your head against the wall saying, why the fuck didn't I just check? But this is where we at. We let out for 50, we got raised. Action is now on the cutoff player and he's deep in the tank right now. After tanking for about 45 seconds, he does eventually land on a call for his remaining $195. After he calls, I ask the dealer for a count on his chips. Buy some time so I can think about this hand because man, I am in the blender. I go and do the tank for honestly about two minutes. I, I just don't know what to do. I think that the cutoff probably has a flush draw. The only problem is me having the Jack of Clubs is not a great card for me to call off right here, but I have top two pair guys. I'm not worried about queen eight. King queen is a possibility and seven eights a possibility for the middle position player to have. But I've got top two pair. The pot's also ballooned up to $560 and it's only $185 more for me to call. So after thinking about it for a really long time, I think looking back, I think this is probably a fold. I think I just, should just fold get away from this, live to fight another day. But in the moment, I was like $185 to win a million sounds pretty good right about now. My inner degen kicked in and for some reason my chips just 
flew into the middle as I said call. I don't know if I'm ahead, I don't know if I'm behind, but I know I'm playing for a $745 pot. So, dealer, if you don't mind, I'd really like to use my one time right about now. What the fuck is this? It's fine, it's fine. We still have one more card to go. All we have to do is hit a jack or a 10. One freaking time, dealer. Let's go! I'd just like to thank the dealer and my one time and all of you. You guys made this happen. No, but all jokes aside, I think we got extremely lucky on that hand and sucked out. I don't think we had the best hand. I don't think I played it the best. But once again, it's 185 to win a million. So, I mean, you know, when you're getting the reversed implied odds and if you look at the graph and if you check all the books, I'm pretty sure it says all donkeys call there. And I'm a donkey, so I called. The outcome was okay. If it wasn't, we would have reloaded and tried to run it up. But hey, we got a win. We won the pot. Let's move on to the next hand. guys do not forget to like and subscribe please that's the best way you can help the channel i really appreciate all the love and support you're giving me thank you so much next hand we're going to look at queen 10 offsuit action folds around us or rather people call gets to us we raise it up to ten dollars thanks to my nice group of degen friends here we uh get six callers yep this is why i never raised to 10 in this game because the entire table is going to call you. So we're going seven ways to a flop, which turns out to be, I'd say, an above average flop when it comes out ace, queen, 10 with two spades. So we flop two pair. Now, there are higher two by her out there, ace, 10, ace, queen, beat us. But there's also a flush draw out there. And yes, I do see there is a straight possibility. But hey, we flop two pair. That's pretty good for me. So when action checks all the way around, I'm gonna lead out of this pot for $60 and either charge the draws as much as I can or get people to fold. Because I think any ace, king, ace, jack, those are calling. I also think any ace of spades is gonna float at least one time and see what happens. So I'm happy to see that the button, the small blind, and the big blind all fold. Ashen gets around to under the gun. He thinks about it for a little bit and eventually decides he wants to see another card. He flicks in $60. And I've got to be honest here. I was extremely happy to see him call and then see one by one every player behind him fold. Because with my hand, I have two pair, but once again, it's very vulnerable. So going heads up to a turn is the ideal situation for me. Unfortunately, the four spades comes on the turn. Not really an ideal card. The front door flush does get there, but when he checks and I see he only has $100 behind, I honestly think there's only one option here. I mean, I don't think he's checking the flush, and if he did, he's just gonna get paid. So I go all in for his $100. I essentially am putting him all in. He thinks about it for a while, tanks. At this point, I know we have the best hand. He obviously doesn't have a flush, and I think any better two pair would snap call me by now he actually thinks about it for a little bit of time and after i see him thinking for this long i figure he has a weak ace and he doesn't really know what to do maybe he has like you know ace three ace five ace six with ace of spades something like that but he eventually puts the chips in makes the call we decide to go once at this point i'm just praying no ace no four and no spade those are really the only cards that I just don't want to see on the river at this point. He turns over ace three offsuit, so he did have one of those weaker aces, and he has a spade with him. So we're still trying to fade a spade, but luckily the eight of clubs comes off. We win the pot and take down another pot worth $390. We look down and see the second best starting hand in poker. That's right, Pocket Kings. It's always nice to get an actual premium every now and then. So we decided to raise it up to $15. Unfortunately, there wasn't a straddle for this hand because we could have raised it up to 25, but I guess we'll start building this pot right here and now. Hijacking cutoff decide they're gonna call and one by one, the rest of the table relinquishes their cards to the dealer. So we will be going three ways to a flop on this one. 
Flop comes out and it's two queen eight with two hearts. So this is pretty much the perfect flop for us. There's flush draws out there. There's no ace, which is the most important thing. And there's also a queen, which someone is very likely to have. So I lead out for $25, a little over half pot, hoping to get called in both spots, which is exactly what happens. They both give it a call and we're going three ways to a turn. The turn comes out and it's a five of hearts, completing the obvious front door flush draw. And I think this is where a lot of people mess up. I think a lot of people will check in this spot. I personally think you have to go for value in these spots. Now, you want to bet, and if you get raised, then you can reassess the situation. So I lead out for $50, which is a little bit over a third of the pot. I like a smaller bet size in this spot. That way you're keeping your queens in, you're keeping any non-believing tens, jacks, things like that. So you get paid by a wide variety. And like I said, if you get raised, you can always reassess. We get called by both spots and the river is the four of clubs, which changes nothing in my opinion. If we're ahead on the flop, we're still ahead right now. And the only thing left to do is to figure out a good sizing to bet to ensure that we get paid. Like I said, I feel like we're ahead here because I feel like any flush is gonna raise on the turn outside of maybe the nut flush. But once again, you can't be worried about monsters under the bed. So I lead out for about 25% of pot, $70. Once again, this puts us in a spot to where if we want to bluff and we want to bet 25%, we can take it down sometimes. It also puts our opponents in a tough spot with a queen or with pocket tens, jacks, like I said, any of those kind of middling pairs, it kind of puts them in a tough spot. It's do they believe us or not? Now we have let out for three streets, so that looks extremely strong. But for this price, I don't think any queen can fold. Like ace queen, I think is calling, especially with the ace of hearts, things like that. So I feel like a smaller sizing on this river is a way to go because it doesn't change anything. And if they thought they were ahead before, they were more likely to call now. After tanking for a little bit, the hijack decides to call and the cutoff folds. So we show our pocket kings. He gives us a nod, a little table tap, and mucks his cards. We asked him what he had. He actually said he had the ace queen with the ace of diamonds. So it's one of those hands that we were trying to get paid from. I'm surprised he didn't call sooner, but hey, we're taking down a $410 pot. Start recording. Watch this. This is the hand. Five dollars. Live five, bro. Is it? Six of diamonds not coming. Six of diamonds? I can't hit quads. So I left the audio on so you guys can get a little backstory for this hand. We straddle five on the button. We look down and see queen six, and the six of diamonds is already burnt. Mill position raises it up to 20. We're in a gambling mood, so we give it a call. Small blind calls, and the undergun player calls as well. So we are going to be going four ways to this flop with one of our cards already dead. The flop comes out, and it doesn't matter that we have a card dead because it is 3-6 queen rainbow. That's right, we flop top two pair. Somehow, some way, we manage to do it. We are pretty much guaranteed to have the best hand at this point. It checks to the middle position player, who was the aggressor pre-flop. He leads out for 45. I honestly think there's no reason to raise right here. I'm not worried about any turns, basically, so I just give it a call trying to give the other players a chance to call, give them a little rope to hang themselves so we can win a much bigger pot. And that's exactly what happens when the small blind decides to put in a call and the under the gun player mucks his card. So now we're going three ways to the turn. The turn isn't the best card in the world. It's actually the king of spades, which I'm still not worried about, but anyone who has a queen may not like to see that king. So when it checks around to me, I figure let's go a little less than a half pot on this one. Let's bet 85 and see what happens. The small blind player thinks about it for a little bit. He goes back and forth, but eventually he decides that he wants to see another card. So he puts in the $85. The middle position player announces that he's going to fold, but he wants to hold on to his cards, of course, to show us at the end how good of a player he is and how much he just got unlucky on that board. The river comes out and it's the five of clubs. Small blind checks to me and he has about $205 in his stack. So with 385 in the middle, I really only see one bet sizing and that is going to be all in. He actually doesn't think about it very long before he decides to put all of his chips in the middle. He makes the call. 
we announced that we have two pair no one sees the queen six offsuit coming but that's what we show he shakes his head and mucks his cards to the dealer we win the last hand of the night 795 dollar pot going our way let's go all right guys let's go to the outro and see how much money we made All right, guys, so we bought into the game for $300, cashed out for $1,600. That's $1,300 profit. That's not a bad night in poker, especially at the one-two tables. But anyways, if you guys like the video, make sure you click on right here because YouTube seems to think you like this one as well. Or you can click over here and subscribe. Either way, I hope you guys have an amazing day, and I'll catch you on the next one.